Hello and welcome back. This is Madan. Today we are going to build a live error tracking application using ASP.NET Core. The idea behind this application is that uh, uh, whenever we, whenever the users of our application encounter any error on their side, then that error uh, is automatically posted back to our live error display application, and we can know about the error at earliest time as possible, and we can start fixing them before the client tell us that something has gone wrong on their side so here on the screen you can see the two instances of the browser and one on the left is displaying our error dis live error display application and one on the right side is the actual application that our client might use so whenever the uh, client encounters any error while using this client application then that error will be posted back automatically to this live error display app and uh, we see that error on the real time so so here I am going to show you the simple demo of this application. So currently on our live error display app there are 16 errors and uh, uh, at this moment our error application this uh, client application is not producing any error so for the sake of this demo I'm going to introduce a small error on this uh, index action of the home controller and we see what happens. So let's go over to the code and uh, I'm going to introduce here a simple exception here through new index out of range exception this is for only for the demo purpose in real times there may be the actual errors and uh, let's go over to the browser and wait for our application to be live so here is our application and uh, I want you to look on this uh, live error display app so whenever the user here visits the home page they encounter the error and that error will be sent back sent to our live error display app on the real time so let's click on the home and here we go we see the another error that is coming from our client index was out uh, out index was outside the bounds of the array and uh, now we can start resolving fixing this error before the client tell us to do so. enough talking now let's go and start coding and build the application in the first part we are going to create our error application and in the second part we are going to create the application to display the error coming from our error application so here i am in the demo folder and let's uh, go i have created one folder here ls the folder is error app and uh, let's create a new application dot net new mbc this this auth individual this this name error app and uh, looks like uh, looks like this has successfully created the application for us so let's do ls and go to our error app and then let's open this in our page in bs code so this is a simple application i'm going to fire up this application dot net watch run So it has started and let's go and browse the application here on the browser localhost 5001 and our application is up and running let's click on s i'm going to use the home controller and uh, i'm going to use the error action of the home controller of this application and customize how we display error to the user at first so for this uh, let's use this error action and then uh, first of all i'm going to receive the exception oops ex exception from the http context dot features dot get I exception feature so this with this we can receive the actual exception uh, that has occurred in our application and uh, you can see here 
if i do exception dot then i can see the errors here and if i do exception dot error then we can see the error data message source stack trace so at first uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to use view back and then use the uh, create the dynamic error property and from there on that i can use exe exception dot error dot message again let's create another view back dot stack trace equals exe exception dot error dot stack trace this stack trace gives you the detailed information about the error and uh, another one is view back dot exe an exception path equals exception dot path so this gives uh, where the actual error is coming from and uh, let's remove this from here and uh, we can use the same view uh, let's see if the error view is there in home or not so it's not there so let's create another file here error dot html and uh, on this we can use our viewback data and display the error message to the user so what i'm going to do is simply say errors in the application and let's display the error here so let's use the p and then let's display error message and our message is viewback dot i think it's error view back that error let's put a horizontal line here and on the another p i'm going to display a stack trace a stack trace view back dot ck stack trace and let's put another hr here and path error path or the exception path view back dot and it's exception path let's copy this and then paste it here exception path let's save this and at the moment uh, we don't see any errors here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce uh, error on the index of the home controller so return new unauthorized unauthorized access exception actually we are going to throw the exception here through new unauthorized access exception and if we go over to our startup.cs and see that then if our application if we are developing our application in development mode then we are going to see the developer exception page and if our application is on the production mode then we are going to uh, see the uh, message error message that is displayed using this error.cssdml so for this demo what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment out these two line and put this on the development environment as well uh, in your case you can change the application development mode uh, if you are using visual studio then it's uh, uh, pretty easy to change the uh, application environment uh, using the configuration file so for the simplicity i'm just changing the way the development mode displays the error after that let's go over to our application and let's uh, refresh and here we go we see now we can see our customized error message displayed on the error page of our application so this is the error message this is the stack trace or detail about the error and this is the error path so now the user whenever any error occurs then users are redirected to the error page and they see the error but in the actual production app uh, we may not want to see and uh, show those errors to the users instead we can simply show them the uh, display them the page uh, about um, saying something has gone wrong and uh, but in this demo we are going to <coughs> uh display all those errors on this page and uh, now our error side application 
our application is properly displaying error now the next step is we need to send this error to our error display application which we have not built yet so the other things that we need to do to send this error to our live error tracking application is uh, that we need to create one model here and store the error to that model and uh, pass that uh, error <coughs> to our other application that is going to display the error so for that i'm going to create a model here simple model here new file error.cs and uh, let's give it a name space of uh, let's copy the name space from other models name space public class error and let's create a simple property here int id prop string error message and then prop string stack trace prop string exception path and let's save this and in the home controller after that let's create an object instance of the error model error equals new error and then error dot error message equals exception dot error dot message error dot stack trace equals exception dot error dot stack trace error dot exception path equals exception dot path now we are going to create a method uh, to pass those data to our uh, live error tracking application and for that i'm going to create one method here private HTTP content C O N T E N T content and on this method we are going to pass the error object here uh, let's bring in the namespace for HTTP content and from here we are going to create a JSON here JSON equals json convert c o n b e r t convert and this is in the namespace newtonsoft.json and we are going to serialize the object here and serialize the error object here after that we are going to return a new string content string string content and then pass the json c o d i n g encoding dot u t f 8 and then we are going to pass this as application slash json now we are going to use a class called uh, http client here to pass the data to our uh, library tracking application so we are going to create here variable field class field private read only http client http client and we are going to initialize the http client here equals new http client and now we are going to use this http client to post that data to the uh, error tracking application so from here what we can do is we can await http client dot http client http client dot post async and we need the url of the application to which we are sending data so our url will be https of course we haven't built this application yet and we'll be building this very soon localhost and let's give it a port of 5001 uh, let's give it another port here 10000 slash home slash new and then we are going to send the 
error message by creating the uh, HTTP content here so we are going to call the method here CRE, CRE create HTTP content and pass the error object and uh, of course this is the async method so we need to make this method as async as well async task and then we need to await here await a w a i t await and let's bring in the namespace for this so what this does is this sends the error message to our application live error display application which will be running at this port uh, and uh, uh, which will have the home controller with new action and that new action receives the object of the error so this is our client application <coughs> that would send error to our live error tracking application which will be creating very shortly and uh, <coughs> This application whenever the user encounters error this application sends error to this API endpoint now I'm going to create our live error tracking application so I'm going to create a folder here mkdir live error tracking let's go into that directory and here I'm going to create a new project .NET new mbc live error tracking this has successfully created our application so let's do the ls and let's go inside that directory and open that directory in our visual studio code So at first I'm going to change the port uh, uh, at which this application runs because our previous application that is the error app runs on uh, 5000 port. So I'm going to change the port to which this application runs. So for that I'm going to here uh, dot use URLs and https slash slash localhost let's run this application on 10,000 port let's save this and we are going to make use of the signal r so let's configure this application to use signal r so for that then what we need to do is uh, we need to add signal r as a service so i am going to do uh, services dot services.add sig nl signal r so in asp.net core 3.0 uh, 3.1 the signal r is included in the sdk itself so we don't need to install that as a separate package so we have added the signal r and we need to configure the routing routing endpoint for the signal r so here what we can do is endpoints dot map hub and signal server we are going to create this class here class shortly and then our path for the signal r will be signal server so let's create this class and i'm going to create this class in the root folder signal signal server and let's create a signal server uh, signal server dot cs and let's give it a namespace of uh, let's copy the namespace from here the namespace is library tracking so let's copy this library tracking and public class signal server and this class should inherit from the hub class and let's bring in the namespace for the hub which is in microsoft.aspnet code signal r now our errors should go away and uh, after that 
we are going to install the client package uh, javascript library for the signal r for that i'm going to use make use of the npm and uh, to use npm you need to install the node package manager but i have already installed node package manager node and npm so if you want to use that go ahead and install node and configure npm to use with the node first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to init npm and leaving the fields blank as it is and i'm going to install the package client side javascript library for signal r so npm install microsoft slash signal r at the rate l a t e s t latest save and this has successfully installed or downloaded the signal r library to our project and we can verify that by going over to node modules and microsoft so let's copy this folder from here copy and then we are going to put it in our ww root directory and i'm going to put it inside the library so i'm going to paste it here library and uh, i'm going to remove this at the rate prefix because this would create a problem while adding the reference uh, uh, javascript link on our layout file so go ahead and remove that at the rate from there from here we can use signal r which is inside the dist folder browser and signal r so let's open the layout.cs file layout.cs html file and here let's bring in that script file for the signal r the script src equals till slash library slash microsoft signal r slash dist slash browser slash signl signal r dot min dot js now let's run the application and uh, see if signal r has been configured successfully or not so dot net watch run So our application has started at uh, localhost 10,000 port. So let's go over localhost 10,000 HTTPS. So it's up and running, and let's test the URL for signal server signal R S I G N A L signal server, which is the URL that we configured on our startup.js signal server so let's refresh and it says connection id is required that means we have successfully integrated signal r to our application now to receive the errors from our client application we need to create a model here so let's head over to the model folder of this application and i'm going to create a file called error.cshtml namespace it should be cs not cshtml error.cs namespace and let's copy the namespace from here namespace this dot models models and let's add a class here public class error and i'm going to add a few properties here so prop int id string error message step trace of string error path Uh, boolean is 
result this is a flag to check whether the error has been resolved or not so let's initialize this to false and let's create another property here a string resolved by the name of the user who resolves the error of a string and description it and let's initialize to date time dot now and from date time updated it or the prop date time let's make this array as well be the result on so this is our model for receiving the error from our client application now we need to add this model to our application db context class and uh, in this application i'm going to i'm using the default sqlite database so let's head over to our application db context class and add the db set for the uh, error model errors and let's bring in the namespace for that here and now i'm going to create the database migration so terminal dot net ef migrations aid it is taking some time dot net ef database update and it has successfully created the table on our sqlite database which is app.db so now Let's go over to our controller, home controller, and add few class, few methods here. So, at first, I'm going to inject application DB context here. Application DB context of context, and let's bring in the namespace for application DB context, and let's create an initialize field context private make it private underscore and at first on the index action we are going to display all the errors so variable errors equals context dot errors dot where x x goes to x dot is result we are going to show the errors we are going to show the error that are not resolved not result and we are going to order them for the order by dng order by descending x goes to x dot created it dot to list and it's showing us the error error that where oops it should be here okay so these are all the unresolved errors and we're going to send those errors to our view and uh, let's make this this is by default this is a get this uh, method response to the get request but uh, let's uh, explicitly define this as the get so that it would be clear for us which is which method is get and which is post and i'm going to create another method here http get and action result so we just solved errors to display the solved errors errors that are solved so let's say errors equals uh, context dot errors dot where x goes to oops where x x goes to x dot it's resolved dot we're going to order them by descending x goes to x dot order order them 
by uh, created at order descending order them in a descending order based on the field created at dot to list and then we are going to return a view and pass those errors met method errors uh, list list of the errors after that I'm going to create another method here which will be post method HTTP post public action result new and this is the method that receives error from our client application so this is we have sent our uh, error message from the client application on the JSON format so this should receive that data and we need to say this uh, we need to add this from body attribute here to receive the application slash JSON type data error error and uh, let's check if model state is valid or not so if not model state dot is valid then we're going to return a bad request since this is a api call from our client application so and we allied invalid data after then we're going to use try exception a and then we're going to return if any exception occurs then we are going to notify client with the exception details inside the try we are going to context we are going to save the errors that is coming from our user application to our database table so we're going to add context at errors that add error and then I'm going to save this context dot context dot save changes and let's use the asynchronous version of save changes and to use this we need to make this method async task of i action result and let's await for the result context the void operator Oops, I used I made a different method async actually I should make this method async so let's undo the changes here context that save changes async and let's make this method async task of let's await for this method and if we successfully save our error message to the database then we return uh, return ok to the client with the message success let's save this after then I am going to create another method here which will be HTTP get method HTTP get and public I action result I'll be resolve and I'll be passing ID as a parameter to this resolve method so whenever the user tries to resolve the error then this method will get called and, uh, and the caller will pass ID of the error to this method and this what this does is but errors it gets the corresponding error with the ID given ID from the database first or default and x x goes to x dot id equals equals id and this returns a view with the error message and again I'm going to create another method here http post and uh, let's make this method async here i action result resolve 
and we pass the error http post and what this method does is actually this method updates the error and set its is result property to true so let's check model state first if model model state dot is valid if not then we are going to return the view with the data coming from it after then let's fetch the error from the database first and then update that error so we accept error equals context dot errors dot first or default x goes to x dot id equals equals error dot id and saved error dot equals description equals error dot description saved error dot resolved by resolved by saved error dot is resolved let's set this to true saved error dot resolved on equals date time dot now after that we are going to update the error message update and then pass to the saved error and then we are going to await context dot save changes I think after that we are going to return user to the index action redirect to action name of index so our controller part has finished and now we are going to we need to create our corresponding views for those actions so let's create the views so behind the scene i have added few uh, views that are required for our home controller to save the time so these views are pretty self-explanatory and if you go through the code here then you can easily understand uh, here you can under easily understand them so in the index uh, we have render the error partial html page and the error partial html page displays all the errors and in the result.cssdml we have created a form here to resolve the error and in the solved error we display the uh, solved errors that are uh, passed by this uh, solved error action and uh, we are using the same index uh, view to display we are using the same error partial view to display the error for both uh, unsolved error and solved error so if you go through this view one by one then you can easily understand uh, them the other thing we need to do is we need to create a system that uh, uh, brings or that updates the errors from the client applications or user applications on the real time so for that we are going to make use of the signal r and to use signal r we have already configured signal r in our project now we are going to make use of this so we are going to use this private where what we are going to do is we are going to inject a hop context to our controller so i hop context which is of signal server hop context and let's bring in the namespace for the hop context here and uh, let's inject this here i hop context of signal server signal server hub hop context and then let's initialize this here hop context equals hop context this is the way you use signal r whenever you want to notify your client uh, side from the controller so basically you can use i hop context now whenever the error is saved into our database we want our client uh, side application we and we aren't our views to update automatically to display the latest error so what we can do is context dot clients dot 
of context.clients.all. We have a method called send async and uh, we need to pass the name of the method that we want to execute on our client side. So what we can uh, let's give it a name of refresh error and the second parameter uh, we can pass anything we want to or we just pass empty string here. So let's make this await 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 and this method is already async. Now we need to create this refresh error method uh, on our script file. So let's head over to let's find the site.css site.js sorry site.js and let's uh, initialize jQuery here. Let connection equals new signal r dot hop connection builder connection builder builder dot with url and we need to pass the url here signal signal server dot build after then we need to start the connection connection dot start and then we can create the method that we defined on uh, that we define on our home controller refresh error so on the site.js what we can do is connection dot on refresh error what we are going to do is we're going to write a piece of code that refresh our uh, index page of the home controller so what we can do is uh, let's use a simple trick here window dot location location dot href equals slash so this redirects our application or refresh the our applications to load to reload the index page and uh, we will see the error coming from the clients on the real time automatically so let's save this and uh, there is one thing we need to do on our client side application since this application is running on uh, 10,000 port so we need to send data to the 10,000 port from our client application so let's go over to our client app let's open the application that we created before and uh, let's this is our client application let's open this in visual studio code and uh, Oh, we have already configured this to send the data on the 10,000 port so now let's uh, le let's test our application so here I refresh on the home page and we don't see any errors uh, on the on our library tracking application which we should see so let's check what's wrong with this and here I did a typo so it should be href and now let's again go over and let's refresh the application let's refresh this application as well now I click on privacy and uh, let's go on the home which is now currently throwing exception so when I click on the home we see the errors so, so now let's uh, go over to the code and uh, throw a new type of exception to verify it's actually working so this is it's a new index out of exception index out of range exception let's throw this and uh, let's check if the application has started up or not so it's starting up it's taking some time now let's go over to the browser and uh, let's click on privacy now let's go on to the home action and uh, I want you to see on the live error tracking application whenever I click on this home this uh, uh, throws new index out of range exception and this message should display here automatically so click on home and here we go we see the error message on this so we have a result button here and if we click on the result if I click on the result button then we can see the error error path and then stack trace and now from here we can cancel it or what we can do is we can resolve the error so we can write some description here error 
resolved and resolved by the name of the person and then click on resolve then that error has gone from our main home page but if i go over to the let's go over to the code and see what the url for that home controller of our library tracking application and if we go to the solved errors then we should see the solved error as well be the solved errors solved error Oops, it should be slash home slash solved error or errors solved errors and this is the solved error so let's add the link for this on the nav bar so let's go over to our layout.cshtml layout.cshtml and uh, i'm gonna copy this and paste it down here and then we are going to see we are going to visit the salt as well be salt errors action of the home controller salt errors and i'm going to add a little pipe here so let's go over and refresh our application actually it is starting up so let's refresh it, refresh it again and uh, we should see those links so whenever we click on home we see all the errors whenever we click on salt error we see the salt errors and whenever the client application uh, throws any exception then we are going to see those exceptions automatically to our live error tracking application so this is it for this demo and i hope you guys uh, uh, like this video if you like this video and uh, if you think this video helped you in any way then please subscribe and share it to others uh, so that others also get a chance to learn this all right this is it for today thanks for watching and have a great day